Good evening and welcome to this latest episode of Patriots Video Blogs for YouTube. Uh, I am your host, Brutus. And uh, tonight I want to talk a little bit more about uh, <clears throat> the proper role of government spending uh, in the economy. Uh, lately I've been having some uh, debates with people uh, who are uh, supporters of Obama's latest spending uh, packages. Uh, they believe that uh, government spending increases are needed to uh, quote unquote create new jobs in this economy. So this uh, brings me to the topic of proper government spending. There are two types of uh, government spending projects, uh, projects which are needed or demanded by the general public. Uh, these projects typically consist of uh, repairing damaged roads, bridges, or building new schools, courthouses, police stations, uh, etc., etc., that are uh, either too old or insufficient in size. Uh, these spending projects are an appropriate use of uh, public funds mainly because a uh, society composed of individuals has determined that their need for these essential public services uh, outweighs their need for some other product or service uh, which they may obtain in the private sector. <clears throat> uh, in this case, uh, taxpayers are purchasing a service which is considered uh, by them to be useful in their own lives. Uh, the second type of government spending uh, is the uh, more prevalent and insidious type. Uh, this type of spending uh, was the type Americans saw during the Great Depression and it is still very much alive today. Uh, this type of spending which is said to uh, quote unquote create jobs and uh, increase wealth and in truth, no <coughs> in truth nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, let's use the example of a bridge. Uh, say there's a need for a new bridge in the town of Smithburg, Ohio. Um, the old bridge is on the verge of collapse and the people demand uh, that a new bridge be built so they can continue to drive, to drive across it uh, safely every morning on their way to work. Uh, in this instance, the people have uh, consented to purchase the new bridge so that they may uh, continue to get to work and uh, bring home a paycheck every week. But now let's consider the new bridge being built uh, in the town of uh, Clark, Florida. The town of Clark already has a decent bridge across their river. Uh, but the government has determined that unemployment is too high in Clark and that some of the unemployed workers could be put to work building a new bridge. There's nothing wrong with the old bridge, but the people consent to the new bridge because quote-unquote creating jobs seems like a worthy public function at the time. Uh, unfortunately for the people of Clark, what they don't realize is that the government cannot create anything without taking it from someone else. So for example, uh, Let's say that the bridge costs $50 million. Well, that $50 million must be taken from uh, the general public, including those newly employed bridge builders, to uh, pay for the project. That means that somewhere else in Clark, uh, someone else is not going to get a job, or maybe someone else won't buy a new car or a new house. Uh, maybe uh, the software firm in Clark will decide uh, expanding is not worth the risk in a high tax environment. And, uh, Maybe that software firm will even decide to move its operations to uh, Smithburg, Ohio, or even China. Uh, in the meantime, however, all that the public sees is those newly employed bridge workers are uh, happily working away on that useless uh, but attractive new bridge. They drive by the bridge every day and feel good about helping these men uh, find a job. But what they never see or hear about is the unemployed software engineer or the family of five who cannot afford to buy a new minivan or a house big enough for their family. Uh, instead, we are told that the government has solved the unemployment problem by increasing public works. And while in the short run more people may be uh, employed, their standard of living has been reduced. And in the long run, uh, the community will see rising unemployment coupled with increased taxes, rising prices, and or debt. And so the vicious cycle uh, continues on and on. All the while, every negative continues to grow, inflation, spending, debt, taxes, uh, until one day the uh, people wake up and realize they are working 60 hours a week to support a massive bureaucracy while only just getting by themselves. And it's usually uh, just about that time that those people will finally realize that uh, no politician can create something uh, out of nothing. Um, if you're interested uh, in, in learning more about economics, uh, there's a book that I've uh, been reading off and on lately. It's uh, actually very, very good, uh, well written, uh, written by a, a Nobel Prize winning economist and, uh, and written in such a way that 
the average Joe, the average American can uh, understand it. And I have it here. It's called uh, Economics in One Lesson uh, by Henry Hazlitt. <clears throat> um, if you have any interest in economics at all, if it's just a, a hobby interest, I, re I definitely recommend picking this one up. I bought it at uh, Borders Books for like 12 bucks. But um, uh, looking forward to seeing you next time.